Welcome to Transport Vlog. My name is Paul and in this video I'm going to take you on a train journey from Unandera to Robertson from the back coach of this heritage train. This video is about 80 minutes long so I put timestamps in the description so you can watch it in segments if you need to. This is one of the most scenic railway lines in Australia and it only rarely has passenger services. The journey will start at Unandera which is about 90 kilometres south of Sydney. It will then run predominantly southwest through the Illawarra Escarpment to end at Robertson. This journey is about 40 kilometres in total. The first section runs through the Unandera and Farnborough Heights suburbs and then climbing steadily up the Illawarra Escarpment going south of Mount Kembla to Dumbarton. So now departing from Unandera station. This train is leaving from platform two and we're on the Down Moss Vale line. It's bi-directional, also being used by trains from the south coast towards Wollongong and Sydney. This is the reason that this line is electrified. The non-electrified line to the left is the up Moss Vale line and the line to the left of that with the track machine on it is a good siding. Platform one over on the right is used by trains going towards Kayama. Notice the goods siding now joining the up Moss Vale line. You can now see the south coast branch over on the right. This line goes to Kayama and it is predominantly single track with some passing places at some intermediate stations. Notice that the up Moss Vale line on the left is not electrified. This line is only used by freight trains. The junction to the right allows a train from platform one to access the down Moss Vale line and links to the up Moss Vale line as well. The junction coming up now provides a connection between the down Moss Vale line and the South Coast branch line. This is used by South Coast trains traveling to Wollongong and Sydney to access platform two, and also for freight trains to access the up Moss Vale line. From here, the line to Robertson and Moss Vale starts to ascend. You can still see the South Coast branch below. Note that that's the only line that is now electrified. And as we take this very gentle curve, the Kayama line disappears from view. Notice the guardrails as we cross this bridge that goes over the Pacific Highway. The line is now going through Farnborough Heights. This is going to be the last residential area you're going to see for a little while. As you can see, there are quite a few electrical masts along this section of line. This is linked to a project that's kind of in limbo at the moment, which is to create a new line from Dumbarton, which is further up. I'll show you that when we get to it. This line would run north to Malden in the Southern Highlands where it would join the main south line. That's the main line from Goulburn, Moss Vale to MacArthur and then on to Sydney. I'll show you this on a map when we get to Dumbarton. This new line would be freight only and it would be electrified and that's the reason that there are electrical masts along this section. It's also the reason why this section of track from Unandera to Dumbarton is double track as this would provide sufficient capacity if and when this new line is built. out for the blue automatic trip gear lowered sign. 
here it is. If you know more about this and what this means, do let me know in the comments. We are now about to leave the Sydney Trains network. This means that different rules and different standards apply from now on. Look out for the white sign that's going to appear just here. Excuse me, Gary, I just... Yeah, that's okay. Okay. No worries. <laughs> Listen out for the locomotive horn. I'll reveal the loco later in this video, so keep watching. The bridge appearing here is for the road to the Farnborough Heights Royal Fire Service. You can see someone on the bridge. Although you can't see it, Farnborough Road is just to the left and we get under a bridge for another local access road. Where you see the car parked is Farnborough Road. As we leave Farnborough Heights this line is going to get a whole lot more scenic as we now enter rugged bushland and at this point the line starts to ascend much more noticeably as well. Notice the bi-directional signalling that allows trains to travel in either direction on either line. starting to climb at a gradient of 1 in 30 and what we are climbing is the Illawarra Escarpment.
this trip was on the 6th of June 2021 and it was three weeks before the shortest day and this created a few challenges at times with the low sun as you can see here I did the best I could but there's a few times where the sun just got in the way this footage was all taken on my iPhone 11 if you're into photography and you know how to stop this happening either using an iPhone or using a normal camera then do let me know in the comments Now coming into Dumbarton. Earlier I mentioned the Dumbarton to Malden freight line, which has partially been built but is in limbo at the moment. Dumbarton, where the train is now, is at the south and Malden is up at the north. The new line would feature the 4km Avon tunnel, which would be just after the junction with this line. This would be the longest tunnel in Australia. The line would then go under the Hume Highway and then join the main south line which is indicated in blue on this diagram. Now returning to this line, this next section from Dumbarton to Summit Tank is very spectacular. It features two tunnels, snow sheds and an impressive if not slightly scary viaduct. I'll also show you the location where the proposed Dumbarton to Malden line would have started from. The hill that you can see right in the back here is I believe Mount Kembla and it's 535 meters above sea level. Here in Dumbarton is the end of the double track section. So now taking the junction and from here on it is single track with a couple of passing places which you'll see later on. Notice that there are still masts for potential overhead wires in the future. This means that we haven't yet reached where the planned junction where this new line to Malden would go. You can also see to the right remnants of when this line was double track in the past and could be double track again in the future.
very last vertical mast is coming into view now. Look out for the red signal coming into view. Just to the left of that is where the proposed line to Malden would veer off. Again, the sun's not helping me too much here, but you can get a fairly good idea of where that line would go. If you ever want to travel on this line, and I'll talk more about how you might do that later in this video, then I encourage you to sit on the right side of the train. That's if you're traveling from Robertson down to Unadera. Uh, this would be the south side of the train. From here, you get some awesome views all the way down to the coastline. Views that I can't quite show you from the back of the train. This cutting is leading to a snow shed. The snow shed protects the line from falling rocks and other debris coming from above. Coming up now is the Illawarra number no. one tunnel. This tunnel is 188 meters. On the left you can see some fences and some ladders to those fences. This all seems to be all part of protecting the railway line from anything that might fall from above.
no roads around here, but the occasional fire trail such as this one by this signal. The idea for this line was first proposed in 1880. Local Moss Vale residents and business people wanted a connection with Port Kembla. 45 years later, on the 26th of June 1925, construction work started. The line took seven years to build and it opened on the 20th of August 1932. Passenger services started immediately using CPH rail motors. In 1938, the CPH rail motors were replaced by the Class 30 steam locos, but in 1967, the CPH rail motors returned. In September 1985, the weekday service was replaced with a road coach. However, a locomotive hauled weekend service continued until July 1994. This service ran from Sydney to Moss Vale via this line. For the next 12 months or so, the locomotive hauled service was replaced by an Endeavour train. Then on the 19th of August 1995, the weekend service became a tourist operation run by 3801 Limited. They called it the Cockatoo Run and that's the name that they still use today. 3801 Limited are now known as East Coast Heritage Rail and it is one of their trains that I'm on right now. The Cockatoo Run service operates about every two months. I'll put a link to the East Coast Heritage Rail website in the description below. This line continues to be used by a wide variety of freight trains today. We will be stopping shortly to let one pass. This line is also a useful diversion when the main south line is closed for track work. This line is currently operated by ARTC, that's the Australian Rail Track Corporation. The line is controlled from ARTC's network control centre in Juni. XPT and Explorer trains have run on this line and will probably continue to do so when there's track work on the main south line. Now approaching the Illawarra number two tunnel. This tunnel is much longer at 628 meters.
Here is the location of this tunnel on the map and also the viaduct which will appear shortly after. We came out of that tunnel much more slowly than when we went in and there's a reason for that which will become apparent in a moment. The reason we're going so slowly is that we're just about to travel on to the viaduct. This is one of the most spectacular parts of this run. Notice the guard or check rails that would protect this train if it were to derail on this viaduct. There is a big drop, especially on the left side. The viaduct has a radius of 8.75 degrees and is 200 meters long. Now descending and picking up speed, This line got the nickname the Cockatoo Run in the 1980s. At this time, hundreds of yellowtail black cockatoos could be seen in the trees along the escarpment from Unandera to Summit Tank, where we will be stopping shortly. They would often be seen on the track feeding from grain that had been spilt from passing trains. More recently, these yellowtail black cockatoos have moved closer to the city because there seem to be more interesting and exciting food options for them. So as a result, they're quite rare in this area now. So if you do spot one in this video, do let me know in the comments. I will be getting off this train at Robertson, but the line does continue to Moss Vale. The total distance from Unandera to Moss Vale is 57 kilometers. Notice the rail crossing sign on the left. There are no roads in this area, but there are plenty of fire trails. <laughs> Now starting another ascent.
In this cutting, notice the sandstone rocks on either side. Back in the 1920s, there wasn't all the clever construction machinery that we have these days, so all of this would have been done by hand using pretty basic tools. So now pretty much at the top of the ascent and getting very close to summit tank now. Notice how much straighter the line has become and how the vegetation has changed now that there's a lot more sun in this area. Sorry about the quality of the footage here. I was keeping my camera between two slight smudges on the back window. And when the sun was pointing straight in as it is now, I couldn't actually see the iPhone screen. So I was working blind, so to speak.
now coming into the Summit Tank passing loop. Notice the signal on the left as it changes from a red aspect to a green aspect. I think we might be stopping for a while. It just changed now. The name Summit Tank comes from steam engine days when tank engines would take on water here at the summit. In steam days, a bank engine would be attached at the back of the train from Wollongong to assist with the climb up to Summit Tank. There was a turntable here to allow the bank engine to be turned round. The banking engine would then be watered and it would then be attached to trains going the other way, so back down towards Unandera and Wollongong and would assist with braking on the downhill sections. We are on the move again briefly. This is just to pull into Summit Tank platform. You can see the Summit Tank station platform here. This was built in 1995. As you can see, people have got off here to have a look at the spectacular Summit Point Lookout, which gives you a wonderful view of the Illawarra Valley. This platform was built especially for the 3801 Limited Cockatoo Runs and is maintained by Wollongong Rotary Club. So here is the view of our train. Propelling us forward is class 421 loco 42101. The class 421s were built in 1965 and 1966 and only 10 of them were ever built. Here is the reason we stopped. This is where they learn train control. Oh, okay. There we go. Okay. Hauling this freight train were two Class 81 locomotives. There's 80 of these in total. They were built between 1982 and 1986 at Clyde Engineering. As you heard from the East Coast Heritage Rail volunteer a moment ago, this is the place where they practice train control. You need to know what you're doing for the descents on the other side. The next section is from Summit Tank to Mount Murray. This is all single track and continues through the rugged bushland. The single track section ahead is now clear, so we're ready to leave Summit Tank. So it's going to be downhill from here. The first section is relatively straight and the train quite quickly picks up speed. But then after a few kilometers, the track gets more and more bendy and we have some more of those deep cuttings that you saw earlier. The journey time from here to Robertson is about 35 minutes. Coming into view now is the Summit Tank Station platform. Notice the train now picking up speed as we start the descent. Okay. 
The two signals here control the next single track section, which we're about to go on to now. and out for the train horn again. And here's another rugged sandstone cutting. Now crossing fire trail number 15. This would have been the reason that the driver sounded the horn earlier. This fire trail has been following the line for quite a while now and would be used for routine maintenance work and also to access the line in an emergency.
From here, the line gets a lot more bendy. I suppose you could think of this as the train equivalent of hairpin bends. Notice how much deeper this cutting is compared to some of the ones we saw earlier. I'm sure the trees and other vegetation along this line must have been affected by the summer 2019 bushfires that really ravaged this whole area, along with many other areas in New South Wales and also Victoria and other states as well. However, 15 months on, it's very hard to see any effects of the bushfires at all. The vegetation has regrown very quickly, probably helped by quite a lot of rain over the last few months.
Notice the sudden change in vegetation here. The large trees fade into the distance and are replaced by a mixture of different low-lying shrubs and bushes. But it's not long before the large trees return. sun got the better of me again on this section. Listen out for the train horn again. Now approaching the Mount Murray passing loop. What's this 4x4 vehicle doing on the track? If you know, let me know in the comments. Now crossing Mount Murray Road and just beyond this road is the site of the old Mount Murray station. Let's see if we can spot it. And here it is on the left. Beside the platform you can see the station shelter and the station sign. This station was closed in the 1980s. I guess it was 85, which was when the rail service was replaced with a road coach. This station is heritage listed, being a rare surviving example of small station infrastructure. The crossing loop that you can see here was extended 650 meters in the 1980s. 
in September 2008, the signalling function for this entire line was transferred to the ARTC's Network Control Centre in Juni. So here is the map of the next section from Mount Murray to Robertson. This is also all single track. The scenery changes quite a bit here as we come out of the rugged bushland that we saw earlier, but it's still very impressive. No train to wait for here, so we're now leaving the Mount Murray crossing loop and going back on to the next single track section, which will take us all the way to Robertson. Now coming out of the rugged bushland and you'll now start to see some more signs of life, well human life anyway. This fenced farmland on the left is a good example of that. bridge that we've just gone under here is for the Taurus Road. This road joins the Illawarra Highway shortly after this bridge.
At approximately this location, there used to be a station called Ocean View. The station was closed in 1968 and there are no remains of this station left today. If you know the exact location of this station, do let me know in the comments. The road on the right is the A48, the Illawarra Highway. The A48 keeps quite close to this line between here and Robertson. This line goes under the A48 on several occasions, the first one being right here. The Macquarie Pass National Park is over on the right. We've been following it for quite a little while, but it's quite hard to see from the back of the train. This section has a 20 km an hour speed limit. Now picking up speed again. <laughs> now going under the Illawarra Highway again. Listen out for the sound of the engine on our class 421 locomotive. It's very apparent just here.
now going under the A48 for our third and final time. train horn that you just heard there is for Randy Station. Pay attention, don't blink, otherwise you might miss it. On the left, although you can't really see it, is the grounds for the Robertson Hotel, which dates back to the 1920s. Here is Randley Station. Yep, that's it, one tiny platform. The level crossing is for Fountaindale Road. Randley House Station is still technically open, but East Coast Heritage Rail are not stopping there at the moment due to safety concerns with the platform. In the past, East Coast Heritage Rail trains have stopped at Randy Station to allow people to have a nice leisurely lunch at the Robertson Hotel. Now on the outskirts of Robertson, which means we're getting close to the end of this very scenic and memorable train journey. So did I. But I think used to go up and drive that little train. Yeah. Just drive up Because we used to have a Notice the A48 road again, this time appearing on the left. Now crossing Hoddle Lane. The Robertson Cheese Factory is appearing on the left. Thank <laughs> you. 
that level crossing was for Merrillard Street, notice the gates going up. And now this train is taking the line to the left, which will go into the Robertson Station platform. Robertson Station has a crossing loop similar to the ones that you saw earlier in this video, which allow trains to pass here before accessing the single track sections on either side. As we come into Robertson Station, we are greeted by the sound of bagpipes. If you can name that tune, let me know in the comments. Now saying goodbye to this East Coast Heritage Rail train as it leaves Robertson on its way to Moss Vale. If you enjoyed this video do give it a like, give it a thumbs up and do leave a comment below, I'd love to hear what you think and if you have any questions leave those below as well. If you haven't yet subscribed to the Transport Vlog YouTube channel, then please do and also click the notification bell. That way you won't miss out when I release future videos. I'll leave you with the sound of 42101 accelerating into the distance.